Well, today I'm talking about the lost art of stratigraphy. It's, a, it's a, an area of archaeological practice that's uh, uh, quite uh, dear to my, to my heart. I uh, grew up uh, reading Mortimer Wheeler's Archaeology from the Earth, and of course Wheeler stressed the importance of stratigraphy in terms of understanding the relationships between deposits across a site. Um, I also had the opportunity to work for a while on the British excavations at Danby Hill Fort, an Iron Age hill fort in southern Britain, where Barry Cunliffe was renowned for his careful stratigraphic excavation of pits, earthworks and other features. And as an undergraduate student, I also worked at Early Man Rock Shoulder in northern Australia, in northern Queensland, at the same time as Jed Harris, the EC Harris of the Harris Matrix, was working at the site. So I have a bit of involvement uh, uh, with stratigraphy and uh, I have a training of course in sedimentology and geomorphology, so I bring a certain sort of eye to a site. Now, I'm sure we're all familiar that in an ideal world, uh, an archaeological site is a layer cake of layers. This is one of the classic French uh, Upper Paleolithic sites in the Dordogne. Uh, it's, I like it because it's a really good example of classic layer cake stratigraphy. We've got um, the dark um, charcoal rich occupation layers, each nicely separated by layers of limestone, ebullet or frost fractured uh, rock. So this, this serves as a, a really good example of the sort of layering we'd almost ideally expect to find. You know, each uh, well distinguished from the layer above and below, uh, older layers at the bottom, younger layers at the top. And the archaeological, an archaeological excavation, like a piece of surgery, involves careful dissection of the structure of a site. Now this certainly is the case overseas, but I think in Australia we've really lost this art. Um, we tend to dig in quite small pits, one metre square, 50 centimetre squares. Um, uh, in rock shelters we're, we're looking at uh, fairly amorphous deposits and we're working in uh, with generally in a fair, digging in a mechanical way with spits, two centimetre spits, three centimetre spits, five centimetre spits, and we've really forgotten how to think about a site as a, as a stratigraphic entity. And to me, I think stratigraphy now is perhaps the major failing of archaeological training in this country. When I read through the mass of archaeological reports and look at the, uh, uh, the site reports, look at the stratigraphic sections, it's very clear that very few people are really understanding uh, the structure of their site and the sorts of deposits they're looking at. Imagine a young field archaeologist sitting at the bottom of his trench, looking at the wall of his trench. It's all red-brown deposit, fairly undifferentiated, few rocks here and there, odd charcoal smudge, a bit of mottling. What do, what do they do? You know, they, they draw a line around the areas of organic enrichment, a line around the areas of mottling, draw in the major rocks, and that's it. No interpretation, no sense of how that, that sediment built up, no sense of where that set, those sediments came from or how they relate to material outside the site, whether those sediments are reworked or whether they're primary deposits or whatever. I, I think the major problems are conceptual, not technical. And I just want to give uh, younger archaeologists a bit of a feel for how they may go about thinking about a site, what sort of questions they might ask uh, about the structure of their deposits as a way of improving the quality of the archaeological recording exercise. So today, uh, I want to work through, I just want to walk through the, the, the process. My aim is to get you thinking stratigraphically. I want you to visualise the sediment cycle. Sediments have a source, they're transported to a site, they're deposited on a site, they're altered and they're removed from a site. So let's think of the life cycle of sediments. Um, and I want, to, I want to walk through uh, uh, the process by starting by looking at sediments and then looking at how sediments are combined in depositional units that we call layers. And then I want to look at the interface between layers. I want to look at the features, the pits and burrows that cut through layers. And I want to look at the processes that overprint the stratigraphic sequence, uh, classically soil development. Why should we do this? Why does it matter? Well, the, the, the problem is archaeological remains are intercalated or slipped into uh, a sedimentary sequence that may have a complex history of its own. And we need to understand that if we're to understand our site. Uh, sediments, of course, are also the recording medium of, of the site. Imagine a video oh, and strobe analogy. 
depending on how fast you record, uh, uh, depends on uh, what sort of mix of material you get, whether there are gaps in the sequence, where you get overlays of occupation, whether you get clear separation of events. So sediments are the recording uh, medium. And sediments are also an environmental archive. They're, they're a bridge between the rock shelter and the wider landscape, both in terms of the stuff that's flowing into the shelter from outside the shelter, and events that are happening within the shelter as the climate changes, how fast the shelter itself weathers. And this sedimentary history of the site is basically a site's biography. So there are all sorts of reasons for getting uh, a good working field interpretation of a site's stratigraphy. Now, it needn't be a complex process. It doesn't require high-end equipment. You don't need to have a portable XRF. You don't need to be into magnetic stratigraphy. I'm talking about good, basic field recording that can be done by a field archaeologist with a trowel, a tape measure, and a hand lens. Uh, we're talking about asking the right sort of questions and we're talking about a sort of uh, recording process that any good field archaeologist can make, a good competent assessment of site stratigraphy. Do you think, um, Mike, that the, um, the art of stratigraphy is somewhat lost because people don't recognise the land units that they're working on, this basic idea of how a landscape, what a landscape is and how a landscape is formed. It's been partly my own experience that archaeologists will go to a place to excavate it, but they won't even recognise the piece of landscape, that the geomorphic piece of landscape that they're working on, which seems to um, be almost like the cover of a book before you look at the stratigraphy or the detail of the stratigraphy within it. Yes, I agree, absolutely. I think it's a failure to read the, the, the landscape. I mean, archaeology is a science-based humanity. It's a very broad-based subject, and uh, uh, sometimes I think the science end of our training is, is, is quite poor. I think if you're going to be a field archaeologist, you need a working knowledge of geomorphology and sedimentology. You need at least to be able to look at a landscape and say, this is an area where sediments are going to accumulate, this is... Um, a point bar deposit, this is the tail end of a dune, uh, 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 this is a little rock shelter where the sediments are held in by the block fall at the mouth of the shelter. You need, you need a bit of an eye for what's going on in the landscape. Um, in a sense, it's the conceptual framework is more important than anything else. Uh, it, we do enough field work in, enough, in, in, in such variable conditions that, that we should be able to see what happens when water flows across a landscape, where it goes, where the sediment ponds and accumulates. If we look at a landscape, we can see which bits of it are eroding, deflating, where the sediments are going. We, we, we need to have an eye to reading a landscape, and reading, reading the structure of a site is, is part of that whole process. Do you see archaeologists as needing to be I guess environmental historians as much as archaeologists to understand the context of a site um, and particularly I, I'm, I'm thinking here of um, how we go about excavating these landscapes without some sort of concept of what landscape we're looking at. Um, I, I'm thinking here of people and I've seen it many times myself, people going to a site not fully understand the landscape and then just almost randomly deciding to put a one by one metre pit or a 50 by 50 centimetre pit down and simply taking it off in these um, five centimetre spits with no real understanding of, of the, I guess, environmental history of an area and the need to, to look into that before beginning the excavation. Again, I, 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 I agree quite strongly with, with that view. I think uh, environmental history is uh, one of the uh, foundation disciplines, I think, of, of field archaeology. Um, it's, not, uh, it's not an optional extra, uh, simply because the, uh, the structure of a site, where you choose to, to dig and how you dig, uh, makes such a huge difference to the quality of information you recover. You know, what you date, uh, how you analyse your site is absolutely fundamental to the structure of the, uh, the information uh, we, we, we gather. Um, 
in practice, you should be able to stand on the site before you start excavating and have a, a, a working hypothesis of how that deposit is built up, where the sediment's coming from, what part of the landscape you're looking at, and those sorts of uh, those sorts of readings will help you decide which part of the site you're going to dig, you know, where you're likely to get disturbance, where you're likely to find areas which have been heavily disturbed by animals, or where you've got water runoff, uh, where you're likely to have uh, good site integrity, where you're likely to have a complex mixture of sediments. It's 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 often I've seen cases where, where people have dug uh, quite a small trench inside a rock shoulder and they've hit what is absolutely the most complex part of the, of the site where a whole series of, of layers feather out together so that within a five centimetre range uh, you cut through three or four layers which, which actually um, uh, expand out as you move down the sequence and so you might get a 5,000 year spread just within a few centimetres where a few metres out you know that, that, may, that may cover a two metre depth. Now you need to know what you're likely to encounter when you're, when you're, when you're digging a site.